Hey, pretty black girls. This is your TT, your upper TT, um, upper unicorn. Uh, as you come in, go on ahead and hit that like for me, please. Share, comment, subscribe. And if I haven't convinced you to share the video, comment, and subscribe, maybe I will by the time this video is over. This is a message that I normally convey uh, in more ways than not, but I feel the way to aim for young African-American women. So I'm a millennial, so I'm aiming at Gen Z when I say, when a man asks you what you bring to the table, your answer should be, I am the table and a real man is not interested in eating until i am set now you don't have to add that last part but the truth is you are the table you are the table do not let these men convince you that you need to be 50-50, that you need to be paying his bills, going half on everything. Honey, that's a roommate. That's what you do with your homegirl. That's what you do in undergrad, in your dorm, and in your campus apartment. I know I've done it. I've shared the rent with another woman. Now, if you want to be in a relationship, uh, because some women, you know, they're like my sister. They're these wonderful six-figure women. Me, I don't work. I don't have an income. I am very blessed to have a high-value six-figure man in my life whose trajectory suggests that he will be making even more than that. However, I'm content with what I have now. I live a very comfortable lifestyle to the point where Yikes, I have put on weight that I really need to lose because he's been feeding me and comforting me. And I'm so comfortable and happy that I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> At least an hour every day, I'm going to have to work something out because this is, this is beginning, beginning to be a little bit much. But these men who are constantly asking you to bring something to a table, you have the right to seek a man who does not require that from you. It's all about what you want to do. Now, if you want to be a woman like my sister who is very hardworking, even I take that back because even she eventually wants to stay at home with her children. And that is the inclination of the divine feminine. You want to be that homemaker and that nurturer. Now, some women with a little bit more of a masculine aspect, staying at home will give them cabin fever. It will drive them up the wall. And I mean, in a fast car, I've seen it happen. But ask yourself, what is the life that you want to live and need to live? I need not to have to go to a nine to five. I don't just want not to go to a nine to five because of the type of mystic, shaman, artistic type of person that I am. I need not to go to a nine to five. So supporting a man would never work for me. It would never ever work for me. The only way I could even think of something like that working for me is maybe I have, you know, some level of money saved up where I can just hand it over. And even then, you know, I don't have a man in my life who would ever want to take money from me. Like I can surprise him with a gift and he's truly grateful, but like he would feel emasculated if I took care of him. If I paid his rent, if I paid, he, he couldn't bear it because he is so truly masculine. I mean, his masculine aspect is heavy in all aspects and in all regards, right? Traditional men, they are protectors and providers. And what they need from a woman, I mean, two, three, two or three things. Are you comely? Are you captivating? 
Are you a companion? Are you cuddly? These are the things like men that a man needs from you who is high value. Now, a lower value man, a man who makes forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, or you know something around there, yeah, he's going to need some money from you. And honestly, in a relationship like that, that's what you call fifty fifty. No one submits in a relationship like that. No one submits in a relationship like that. It's something called cooperate. Okay, because that's a 50-50 relationship and that masculine feminine aspect of those gender roles are not going to apply unless the man is in his role as protector and provider and you are in your role as a lover and nurturer. Now, in my relationship, oh, huge aspect of submission because I'm 100% cared for. I do not have a bill that is my own. I do not. It, it, the lights, the water, the rent, the clothing, the makeup, the hair. There is nothing. The gifts for my mother, my nieces, my nephews. There is nothing that comes from the sweat of my brow. What I offer to my man is femininity, loyalty, love, comfort, oasis. So when the world is hard and when working with these different people around the world and all these businesses and things that he has to go out and do, he has a soft place to land that motivates him. He wants to put that makeup on my face. He wants to put these hairstyles on my head. He wants to dress me in finery and he wants to take it off of me. He wants that comfort. He wants a, play, a, a woman who is smart enough to bounce his ideas off of. Now, some of these men will tell you that education doesn't matter, but I beg to differ. Both me and my partner graduated from universities. However, you know, he's got a master's degree, dare I say. <laughs> I mean, I don't even want to go into, you know, the levels of education, but he's black boulet. He's upper echelon, high society, more so than I am. So I have several reasons to look up to him. When you can look up to a man, it is like nothing to submit to him because he is qualified to be your leader. Now, when you are more educated than the man and you are making more money to a man, no matter how much you want to submit to him and give him what he wants, you're not going to be able to do that. And I'm telling you that from experience. I've been that woman who has forked over thousands of dollars to some immature man who hasn't grown up, who has all the height and muscles and, and appearance of a grown man, but is really just a baby boy. Yeah, a grown child. It doesn't work that way. When you can outthink him, outprotect him, outprovide him, you need to search for a higher caliber of man if submitting is what you want to do. Now, some women don't want to do that. You have the Nicki Minaj types of women who are bosses, who are queens in their own right, and they don't desire that kind of relationship. Some of them desire a co-equal and, dare I say, some desire, you know, a subordinate. And again, that depends on the type of woman that you are and where your masculine and feminine aspect measure out. Because I'll be completely honest, I am a Rohini native, if you know anything about Vedic astrology. I am Venus and Moon dominant. I am... Oh my goodness, if you've ever seen Marilyn Monroe and gentlemen prefer blondes, that's me. That's my character. That's how I go through life. Uh, for the most part, I'm very innocent, very inquisitive, very goofy, silly, happy, and incredibly indulgent. So I want to touch, I want to feel, I want to learn. I'm impressed, I want to experience. 
However, because I'm a woman with a passport, I'm a woman who's a globetrotter, I'm harder to impress than certain other women and certain men who, I'm not going to say low value, but less experienced, they have a harder time impressing me because I've seen so much of the world. I've seen so much of South African wine country and Robben Island where Nelson Mandela was detained in Kenya and Uganda and Tanzania and Zanzibar and Yemen and Qatar and Saudi Arabia and Dubai. It's just a little harder to impress a woman like that who has gained all of those things on her own. So naturally, I had to aspire to the type of partner that I'm with. Because when I'm with him, I'm like a little girl who doesn't know anything. Because he's a genius. He's that successful. He's that intelligent. He's that stable. He has what I need. And I have what he needs. These relationships do not have to be some kind of a stereotype. You may be a woman who's working with a little bit more masculine and feminine. And let me just be very clear, because some men will try to shame you by saying, oh, you don't want to submit to me. You're just masculine. And it's like, no, boo, you're just a high school dropout. And I'm an Ivy League college grad, hon. I can't submit to you. You're on a lower level mentally spiritually you're not as advanced in your craft and in your mysticism like in all ways you are an inferior that is why i can't submit i can submit to a man who can lead me but you are not qualified to lead me for example now just to be clear i have a background as a school teacher And I've taught everything from pre-K to college courses. I was an English teacher in Middle Eastern countries, so I had students as old as myself, right? However, when it comes to teaching core curriculum, when you're talking math, sciences, language arts, uh, all kinds of electives and things, when I have all of that on my plate, I am only good enough to be an elementary school teacher. I don't have what it takes to be a middle school teacher or a high school teacher on that level. My level of math is still in high school. I remember going to my university. I was in math class with all of the jocks. So the whole football team, the whole basketball team, everybody knew me. Everybody had a crush on me. Everybody knew me. Right, And I would be so embarrassed in class and the teacher would call on me because I'm like, you're calling on me in front of all these future millionaires and I don't know the answer because I'm not good at that. Whereas my partner (laughs) is a human calculator. I mean, it doesn't matter what the math is. He has dominated it. So I can just go to him and say, what does this mean? How much is this? What do I do with these numbers? I don't understand. And he's able to teach me and lead me correctly every time. Dare I say, I can follow the man that I'm with blindly, with full faith in his ability to lead me aright and never astray. Not every man is qualified to do that for every woman. Just like I'm not qualified to lead, you know, to create my own homeschooling curriculum for middle school children based upon my own ingenuity and lead them to the promised land of education and, and um, advanced placement. I, I can't do that. That's not what I have in me. Now, when it comes to elementary school, man, I can create some, (laughs) dare I say, some world-class curriculum because I know it so well. I know it in my sleep. I know it when I wake up. 
Now, there are things, you know, when you get to the middle school, high school level that I know very well, you know, history, social studies, language arts, but you get into those maths and sciences and I'm just like, wait, (laughs) I'm really good at genetics, but you got me with this periodic table stuff. I mean, you got me with this, (laughs) with so many formulas, right? And that's just the reality. Those are my limitations, And it's a beautiful thing to know where you're limited so you know what you need in a partner. That's like being short and knowing that you need a tall person to reach up there and get the jam out of the cabinet that you you know you can't reach, right? It's a beautiful thing to know your limitations. It's also a beautiful thing to know your strengths and not to play small the way I tried to do in the past for this man and that other man, desperately trying to play small and humble myself and then getting railroaded and wondering why I'm losing thousands of dollars on his poor decisions. He wasn't qualified to lead me. And there you're gonna come across men who aren't qualified for the submission that they require of you. And it's your responsibility to say no thank you and to hold yourself to yourself and wait for that man who is qualified to lead you. Again, if you are a woman who's working with a little bit more, like, like I'm, oh, I'm hopelessly, helplessly, childishly feminine. And I have tried all kinds of want to be tomboy, want to be thick skinned, want to be strong black woman stereotype. And it just drove me quite literally into therapy because it's not who I am. It's not my element. But for some of you who that is your element, you don't need a man like mine. You, You really don't. You don't need a high-value man. You don't need a six-figure man. You don't need these things because you are those things. And that's beauty, too. So then it boils down to the journey of self-discovery, to understand who you are and what you need in a relationship. And as much as I can be a teacher of children, there is an aspect of me that is a sheep that requires a shepherd. And that's what I have, but that may not be what you need. I need the type of man that I'm with. I have been with an other type and there was failure, there was domestic violence, there was all kinds of problems because That's what happens when you're out of order. We were out of order. I'm trying to submit when I'm the more qualified leader. No, oof. That's for the birds. It's about knowing who you are and what is good for you. My partner who I'm with, I think he's everything, but you know what? He wouldn't be compatible with my six-figure sister. He wouldn't be. Wouldn't be compatible with any of my sisters, actually. That's not the kind of man that they need because they're, they're not me. Some of us are hypergamous because we need to be. Some of us are hypergamous because we believe we ought to be. And I'm one of those people, I I, I dwell in both realms. Honestly, I believe that I need to be and that women ought to be hypergamous. In every other culture, I've seen so many places around the world where there's not even a name for hypergamy, as in dating up, as in marrying a man who makes more money than you. It's normal in China to do that. It's normal in India to do that. But with African-American women, it's, oh, how dare you? Oh my goodness, <laughs> you don't deserve, you don't qualify, you weigh too much, you look like this, you're too dark, you're too short, your nose is too big, your hair is too not being I'm just like, sis. 
<laughs> if these men don't want you, I'm telling you, one man's sunset is another man's dawn. I, I, I'm telling you. <laughs> Get to know yourself and then gather your standards about yourself because it's about having a healthy life. There's nothing wrong with being the provider wife if that's what you are. There's nothing wrong with that. But are you that? Are you a career woman? Or do you feel like you have to because you live in this world of feminism and this world of women competing with men? Are you that, though? For some women, that's sincere. For some women, that's not. I barely leave the house. And I mean... This whole corona, ladies, I'm telling you, I was already this introverted in this inside of the house before the masks and the, and the vaccinations. I was already this way. I was already indoors. I was already a homebody. I did not like going to work. I did not like driving hours on the freeway to and fro wherever I was going. I did not like, I even learned to stop liking traveling as much. I mean, I love to see the world, but traveling is hard. Being in the air for hours is hard. It's dehydrating. It messes with your circulation. It does <laughs> all kinds of things. But you don't want to be some square peg trying to shimmy your way into a circle. Don't let these people fool you. There is no one size fits all. I am a very tall woman and I've been very tall since I was a child. And you know what? All the short guys used to make fun of me for being a giant. And you know what? As an adult, all the short guys are now mad at me because I won't date a short guy. <laughs> and they're the ones who taught me <laughs> to stay away from short men. They themselves, <laughs> sometimes literally, just a blast from the past. Like, no, I, well, why? <laughs> Whereas there are other women who maybe she's only 5'7", but she doesn't mind being with a guy who's 5'6". More power to you. It's not about what looks right to others. It's about what you need and what works for you. Maybe you and your partner work and, and make tons of money. I'm certainly not against making money, and I'm certainly learning how to make my own money. But I have a partner who is financing that journey for me. So I'm learning how to make money without any need. I'm still eating. I'm still, that was my, <laughs> my air conditioning that came on. That was my AC. So the, the bills are still paid. The lights are still on. Everything is still what it is with or without my money. And these men who are being designated as high value, and I'm going to put that in quotes, quote unquote high value. Money is something they're never going to ask you for. It truly boils down to the quality of woman that you are. Are you kind? Are you affectionate? Are you loving? Are you repentant? Are you too arrogant to say I'm sorry? Are you too proud to beg? Are you combative, combative and argumentative? I mean, Truly, righteous indignation is a wonderful quality. It's a beautiful quality, and I'm full of it. But there's a difference between righteous indignation and fighting for a good cause and being a social justice warrior versus, you know, these people <laughs> who find a problem with everything because they're so desperate just to say the wokest thing for, for, for uh, social uh, notoriety for, and popularity, right? That's, that's not what you want. <laughs> and if it is what you want, uh, seek therapy. Because <laughs> that's, that's not a balance. But in reality, every man and every woman 
has yin and yang, or yin and yang, present in their body. Yin is the feminine aspect, yang is the masculine aspect. Femininity is water. <laughs> it's water, it, it takes on whatever shape you put it in. Whereas masculinity, you know, you're talking earth, you're talking flame, you're talking fire, you're talking stability, you're talking aggression. And everyone has these aspects. You are not a complete person if you don't have some level of masculinity and femininity. You're not a complete person. Now, of course, according to gender roles, you would hope that if you're a woman, you're more feminine than masculine, and that if you're a man, you're more masculine than feminine. However, that's not always the case, and it doesn't mean you're some kind of a throwaway. But relationships are about what works for you because the ideal man for me would be problematic for a woman who is my sister who I share the same womb with. Her blood runs through my body and <laughs> the man for me is not the man for her. We actually both have Greek, uh, divine nine, black Greek letter men and, and they even belong to different fraternities. <laughs> just hey um, and as an auntie I want to say no one who is going to cuss you out and constantly call you out of your name has your best interest at heart that's not even struggle love it's just struggle there's no love there nobody no one who's calling you all kinds of B words and you know, insert pejorative. So when you see these men, so-called dating coaches and gurus giving advice, or you see people in your neighborhood or people in relationships, and these men get, you know, throw around these B words like, like it's air, like oxygen, like, like no. And it, and it doesn't, oh, well, he just talks like that, you know. He just comes from the hood and, and Bedford Stuyvesant, and he just was born in a high rise. Nope. Nope. He doesn't love you, he doesn't respect you, and probably doesn't love and respect himself. That man learned the word lady just like he learned the, the B word. He learned the word sister, ma'am, miss, just like he learned hoochie mama ho, thought. Strag and, and, and whatever. He knows those words. Don't make that excuse for him. Verbal abuse is as insidious as physical abuse. Don't put up with it. People who want to abuse you because you disagree with them, don't put up with it. You don't have to. There's a great big world out there a great big one and for every man who looks at you and maybe you don't have what he wants there are 10 more who, who are like yo they're out here like brandy and they want to be down I um, I come from Seattle Washington and there's this thing where the black men on average in Seattle Washington couldn't be caught dead with a dark-skinned woman with 4C hair. They, they can't bear it to be seen with or to procreate with a woman who looks like them. But you know who's scooping up those women? White and Asian men. Because in Seattle, we have this technological thing. We have this Boeing, this Microsoft, this Amazon, this world of technology where... We're importing men all the time from all around the world. And in our particular city, the men outnumber the women eight to one. Add to that a pool of Chinese men who, for decades, were killing off their daughters because China was overpopulated and they decided, hey, there is this law where you can only have one child and if I can only have one child, I'm gonna have a boy. Well, now, 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 
A Chinese woman is one of the hottest commodities on earth. Chinese men are willing to give her anything, but you know what the Chinese woman does? More than any ethnicity or gender on earth. (laughs) She is far more interracially married than any group on this earth combined. She's not even having it. (laughs) She's not even willing to listen. You go to Seattle and I'm telling you, there's like a mafia of half white, half Chinese people. It's like, dude, (laughs) what's with all of you guys right now? And it's always the mom. It's always the mom who's Chinese and the guy who's white or, or black or Latino or something, but you know, primarily white. And I'm telling you, I'm seeing all kinds of white and Asian men paired, not with the high yellow black girl or with the red bone or with the brown skin like me, but with the thin, slim, type four hair having, flat booty, petite African-American woman that was being overlooked because she doesn't have a fatty. She doesn't have coolie hair. I know coolie is a bad word, but you know what I mean. like. That hair, people always like to say, I've got Indian in my family. When it's like, really, you're probably just a Moor, but whatever. (laughs) You're probably already indigenous. Your people were probably already here, but I don't want to have that conversation. So it's just time for aunties to be aunties. And I want to step up. Right? I, in reality, I have nieces and nephews, and sure, they're really young. I think the oldest is nine or ten, but I would really love for younger African American women to avoid the pitfalls that I succumb to due to brainwashing and being that naive, vulnerable young little thing who was listening to what men try to bully me to believe. It's always some low value man telling you what high value men require. It's like, you're not even one. You don't even qualify. You're not even one of these men. How would you know? Well, I'm a man just like they're a man, like whatever, whatever. You need a bill paying woman. You need a weight pulling woman to carry the weight of you. High value men don't need that. Bill Gates doesn't need Melinda's money. <laughs> what is this? The rapper Eve, the former rapper Eve, her billionaire husband from the UK doesn't need her money. Celebrity, Hollywood, actress, uh, all kinds of shows, all kinds of royalties that she has, he doesn't need one red penny from her. He needs her to be her, beautiful, captivating, intelligent, inspiring, loving, comely, loyal. His peace, his oasis, his love, his inspiration. That's all he needs from Eve. Now, I'd like to close by saying high value at the end of the day is subjective. It's about who you value. I'd like to say that there's a difference between, if you're talking numbers, you know, finances, and there's a difference between high value and high quality. And to secure a high value man, as in a man who's making more than 10,000 USD a month, you don't need to be a high value woman. You need to be a high quality woman. And the cool thing about being a high-quality woman is that there's always time to be one. Maybe there's not always time for fertility. Maybe there's not always time for youth and the beauty that comes with youth. But there's always time to be a good person and to beautify your heart, your mind, your soul, your intentions, your vibration. But it's better to do that sooner than later so you can have that full package of youth and beauty and character. This is the stuff of wars, Helen of Troy. This is wars have been fought over high quality women. 
men have come to blows, have killed one another in the name of high quality women. Study those women if you don't have a woman like that in your life. What is it about Marilyn Monroe that made men love her so much? Was it just that she was pretty? I can tell you she's a Rohini native the way that I am, but if you're not studying Vedic astrology, what does that mean to you? I could tell you she's Venus and Moon dominant the way that I am, but what does that mean? Marilyn Monroe was a sweetie pie. A sweetie pie. Affectionate, adorable, charming, sharp as a whip, intelligent. She could carry a conversation. She could carry a tune, sing a song. She was everything that the Japanese geisha is trained for years to be. And in her death, she's still the standard. But maybe you don't want to be her. Maybe you'd rather be a Michelle Obama. Femme fatale, just, just badass. Like, yeah, kiss both of my master's degrees and my law degrees. I'm a part of the Council on Foreign Relations. I'm married to the president of these United States, and I'm just bad in all aspects. And you can't outthink me, outwalk me, talk me, dress me, nothing, bow down. Maybe that's your lane. And here's the deal. <laughs> You can call Michelle as masculine as you want to, but guess what she has? A successful marriage to a successful high-value man. She's not out here barefoot, pregnant, bowing and scraping. <laughs> and your wish is my command. The way that I am, right? Don't have to be like me in Maryland. You can be like you and Michelle Obama. <sighs> there are different ways to get it. Get it how you live. Get it how you get it. But get it. Love you. I hope this resonates. I hope this helps. I am a buddy unicorn. And I am out of here. <laughs>